Us in Progress by Lulu Delaker. Chapter 4 Burrito Man. Nadie sabe el bien que tiene hasta que lo pierde. No one knows his wealth until he loses it. I stood once again at the corner of 17th and K in downtown Washington, D.C., Poppy's Corner. This time I was alone. I knelt down to lean the sign against the tall elm and, and licked a salty tear running down my cheek. A flock of sparrows swirled above me, triggering a rush of memories from years ago. Mijita, I hear my father calling, sounding as close as if he were next to me. Come down already. I'm going to be late for work. I wash my sleepiness away with a splash of cold water. It's four in the morning. Today is take your child to work day. I don't want to go. If only I could have gotten out of it. I wish I were Tanya. Her dad's a doctor's tech. Or Marissa. Hers is a big time lawyer, so she'll probably get to spend the day swiveling in a plush leather chair in an air conditioned office. Even mommy works in an office. She's a school secretary. Not Poppy, though. He's just a food cart vendor. He sells burritos. I'll be stuck standing at the corner of 17th and K all day in the traffic and hot sun. At least none of my friends will see me. By the time we pull into the downtown warehouse parking lot, birds are chirping, soft chirps that grow into full-blown chorus. Nature wakes up. Not me. Not yet. I yawn big and the clanking noises Poppy makes hooking the burrito cart to his old rusty truck shake me up. He slides back in and we rumble down the street to his assigned corner. Alex, he says to me, por favor, take the sauces and condiments out of the box and set them up there. Okay, okay, I mumble as I sweep back the long strand of hair blocking my vision. I take my time lining up the jars and bottles on the counter in the shade of the cart's green and white striped awning. It's going to be a great day with you here, Poppy adds. Really, I ask, raising my eyebrows. Si, si, mijita, ya verás, he says, you'll see. He starts to whistle his favorite folk song from El Salvador, and I force myself to remember why I am here instead of chatting with my friends on the school bus. At the back-to-school night, Miss Chu encouraged parents to take their kids to work today, and Poppy liked the idea, really liked it. I tried to get out of it and said I should go with Mommy instead. No luck. Poppy turns on the propane gas and starts to simmer the vats of beans. Black beans, pinto beans, and orefritos. No meat. Meat is too expensive and sometimes spoils, Poppy says. Beans are better, and rice, and cheese, and guacamole. I like my burrito with meat, though. And there's coffee. Poppy offers lots of it. Espresso, cappuccino, and lately, what a Cuban football friend of his taught him to make. Cortadito. For that, you cut the black espresso with a drop of milk. Now that I'm 12, Poppy puts me in charge of the coffee. I'm old enough, he says. It's only half past six, and out of the tall building comes a man in a classy suit and tie, making a beeline for our stand. The first customer. He's looking straight at the coffee, though. Am I ready to serve him? I panic. Good morning, Mr. Wallace. My father greets him with a broad smile. The usual? Buenos dias, Miguel, the man responds in a deep voice. Yes, please. Black coffee, two sugars, Alex, Poppy says. A simple order. I smile, relieved. The man and Poppy begin to chat loudly about last night's basketball game, and that gives me lots of time to get the coffee ready. Poppy asks about his kids by name. I perk up my ears and wonder how it is that Poppy knows so much about those kids. The man's grin gets wider with each one of my father's comments. So who is this lovely young lady? The man asks, reaching for his fresh coffee. Ah, this is Alex. She's my special helper. Her first time here, Poppy says. She's a good student, you know. I told you she's going to go to college one day, right? The man looks at me like he's seeing a movie star or something. So this is the famous Alex, he finally says. Extending his hand to shake mine. I'm delighted to meet you. The word famous makes my ears burn. So I'm quick to shake the man's hand and look away. My gaze lands on the pink wrapped tin next to Poppy's honor system coffee payment jar. I frown when I notice the handwritten sign on the tin. 
Alex's college fund, it reads. My mind races, trying to think of a way to hide the sign. I'll be sure to tell everyone at the office to come to Miguel's corner and finally meet Alex, the man says, dropping payment for his coffee in the honor system jar. I'm about to slide the pink tin behind some bottles when the man slips a dollar into it. His gesture makes my eyes go wide and my jaw drop. I gasp. I long to be invisible. The morning turns to noon and the line for Miguel's burritos now curves around the corner. Poppy fills warm spinach and corn tortillas with beans and rice and sauces to order and neatly wraps the burritos in tinfoil. They do smell good. Funny how he seems to know so many of his customers and most everyone has heard of me. The novelty of being today's main attraction begins to wear off. One gets used to being a celebrity, you know? I simply smile and hand out hot and cold drinks. Just when I feel kind of tired of standing up and being polite, Poppy pats me gently on the back. Take a break, Alex, he said. Here's your favorite, tu favorito. He hands me a fat burrito filled with pinto beans, melted cheese, and his special spicy guacamole. It's so delicious. I don't even miss the meat. Poppy is humming his tune again. I look at him and smile a little smile. I imagine Marissa in the plush chair of her dad's fancy office and think maybe I don't want to trade with her anymore. Have a great evening, Poppy waves to the last customer hours later. Hasta mañana. By the time we drive back home, it's already dark. Poppy, I ask, when are you opening the restaurant you and Mommy talk about all the time? One day, Alex, one day, he answers. It's true that we have some money now, but my customers love me, you know. They'd miss me if I left. I'll think about the restaurant after I finish saving money for your college. I see. About that college fund, I say. You know that pink tin. You like it, right? Poppy asks. It makes me think of you all day, Alex. The day you go to college will be the greatest day for the whole family. But Poppy, that's like a million years. I whine. And I'll be so proud of you, Poppy exclaimed. What were you saying about the tin? I'm about to ask Poppy to get rid of it. But instead, I lean my head on his shoulder and say, oh, never mind. The sound of someone's sniffles broke the spell I was in. I turned around to see about a dozen people walking toward me. It wasn't the 11-hour workdays, the three-hour commute to work, or the endless Sunday afternoons cooking the week's beans that did him in. It had happened suddenly the day before, during one of his league soccer games. I was there cheering him on. Poppy complained of chest pain, and by the time we arrived at the hospital, it was desmayasado tarde, too late. Mommy was in shock, and it all fell on me to tell everyone at his workplace about the heart attack. But everyone at his workplace meant his downtown customers. So I ended up announcing Poppy's death with the hand-painted sign I spent all night making when I couldn't sleep. Men in suits and women with briefcases, eager for their usual cup of coffee on their way to work, looked puzzled and shaken. A lone homeless man came over and shook his head. I got up and stepped back, letting the strangers get closer. A few of them hugged one another in their shared sorrow. Oh my God, cried a large woman. She stopped in her tracks, took out her cell and called someone. Minutes later, a group of office workers hurried out of their dark glass building to join her. One of them bent over to place a bouquet of fresh dahlias she had just purchased at the foot of the sign. He was such an upbeat man, she said. We often chatted for the whole 15 minutes of my coffee break. He gave me warm lunch on cold days, said the homeless man, always bragging about that smart daughter of his. I sure hope she'll go to college one day, agreed a well-dressed man with a deep voice. Miguel was saving toward that for the 17 years I've been buying his burritos. The man didn't notice me. It was Mr. Wallace. I blinked away my tears as I walked away from Poppy's corner. I thought of the pink tin and smiled. It has a place of honor in my room now. See, the daughter will go to college next fall, I whispered.